Hello, I'm Donna. I'm Sarah. I'm the fox. I'm the cat. We are the hosts of Less Code, More Power. And you absolutely do not want to miss the show we have today because our guest, Chris Huntingford, had does his live demo from a bar he built in his backyard. On UFOs. Obviously. Yeah, you do not want to miss this. See you then. Hi there, welcome again to the Less Code, More Power show. This episode is going to be amazing. I'm Sarah. I'm Donna. I'm the fox. I'm the cat. And as usual on Less Code, More Power, we share with you stories of people from all over the world who are building apps, chatbots, customer analytics dashboards, and all kinds of UI automation with Less Code, More, more. Power. Today, we've got a very special guest. We are going to be speaking to the amazing Chris Huntingford uh, to today. If you don't know who Chris is, he's tattooed CRM guy on pretty much most of his social profiles. So go ahead and uh, reach out to him there. But this episode is going to be great. Hey, Chris. Hey, hey how are you guys? We're great. Awesome. How are you? Thank you for being yeah, here with us. Good. Yeah, th thank you for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> so tell us about you. Sarah and I know you, but we want the entire <laughs> audience to know you as well. Where do you work? What yeah. do you do? How did you get into PowerPlat? What's your deal? Yeah, so um, it's a bit of a weird story. So I'm a rather large, loud South African bloke that lives in the UK. So I've been here for about roughly five years, and that's where I ran into the amazing Sarah Critchley. Um, so at the moment, I work at Microsoft. I've only been working here for around seven months. Um, oh. I used to work in the partner channel for around 10 years. Uh, I somehow managed to become an MVP at one point. And I always say, how do you know when somebody's an MVP? Because they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they will. Um, <laughs> this yeah, is true. <laughs> So um, it's, it's really cool. Like the Power Platform for me is quite an interesting scenario. Actually, I got into it roughly four years ago, believe it or not, when oh. they released Project Sienna. And um, I've always been interested in sort of what was going on around the app build side of things and all that. And uh, I really got stuck in. And then when the Common Data Service version 2 came out around two years ago, that's when I really thought, OK, I can see what's going on with this stuff. Um, I love it. I think it's awesome. And the reason I like it is because I like taking what the Power Platform can do and then associating it to stuff that I do in my regular my regular day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. So as an example, um, we went to play Junkyard Golf the other day. It's like adventure golf sort of thing. Junkyard with, um, Golf? Yeah, yeah. Right. it's epic. It's like broken down cars and it makes all sorts of weird noises and stuff. And yeah, so I <laughs> built an app that tracks golf scores, but it was it's just random. I put it on the net, it's free for download. and. I play guitar, so I've got a little app that can tell me, you know, the different types of guitars that are out there. Um, I do voiceover work, so I could log my voiceover stuff on the apps. It's really, really cool. And the whole idea is really taking what the Power Platform can do and integrating it into the hobbies that I have. So I kind of felt like that was really fun. And it's also this weird sort of amalgamation of your analytical brain and your creative brain. And I really like that because I love yeah. doing creative stuff and I like the analytic side and problem solving. So I kind of bring those two things together, and that's where the Power Platform kind of gets me. Um, a really, really great fun. That is so interesting. I love stories of people from all these different kinds of backgrounds who find their way to Power Platform. Yeah. So did you come from a pro dev background when you were working on that partner channel? Yeah, so I used to do dynamic CRM, so I actually come from CRM version 3. Okay. And um, I've always had the interest in like what's around CRM, and now yeah. it's obviously dynamic 365. That's yeah. ages ago, by the way. Yes. Version three was yeah. way back, way when. a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, it's many, so cool. That's How, where these gray hairs come from. I actually. knew it. See, CRM, you know, it's such a thing that was big in like early two thousands, and now it's amazing to see it having evolved into yeah. customer engagement through all of these various ways and channels, rather yeah. than you know throw everyone's info in a database. Literally a and full transformation. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. Cool. It's, so it's, it's really cool. So Chris, we hear you have a very, very interesting demo to show us. Yeah, we can't Chris, wait. Tell us where you are. I hear you're at your own bar. Yeah, yeah look at this. So I've got a little in my backyard. <laughs> and, uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So he's got a bar in his backyard, yeah. tattooed CRM yeah. guy, and he's going to show us a demo. <laughs> have you ever seen a demo from someone's homemade bar? No, this I is the first. Think so. I think uh, this we is haven't. First. On yeah. our show, definitely the first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen yeah. real quick. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a background to this. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a weird story, but it's not really a demo. This is something that I've been working on over the last year. And it comes from a number of events that I've done over the past couple of years. What actually happened was 
I got asked to present on Power Platform at like the user groups and D365 Saturday events and a number of other places. And I got tired of just showing regular stuff. So I started doing live demo builds. So basically standing in front of an audience, creating a demonstration in front of them from scratch, just from an Excel file. Wow. And actually what's happened- Like pressure. This, yeah, yeah, oh, no, it's, it's, it is huge pressure, but it's epic because what's happened is these demos have created and merged into a thing that I call hack at speed. Oh. And what it does is this little thing that I've got here, not so little anymore, actually, it's gotten quite large, um, gives us the ability to kind of engage partners, customers, anyone that's interested in the Power Platform and teach them loads of different modules within the platform, right? So what I found is that a lot of people think Power Platform is just Canvas apps or just common data service or right. just model apps, and it's not. There's so much more to it. So I thought, okay, what is the best way to show people how this stuff works and how to engage? So that's where Hack at Speed was born. And ultimately what it does is, um, first of all, there's a number of different labs that you can run. So basically uh, the different types of hacks that I've got at the moment, so I'm building so many more, are things like- um, UFO prospect. sightings? UFO sightings. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm gonna show you guys. Ah, <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> yeah. So local governments, uh, managing local government complaints. So I've got financial complaints and financial services management. Um, I've got sleigh sighting, so I did a hack with one of the partners recently that uses AI to decide That's if um, since the sleigh has been spotted. I've got hotel management, which is a hack that like kind of digs into the Dynamics 365 as well as Power Platform. I just love the diverse nature. Yeah, so to this, interact between various, UFOs like, and government yeah, complaints. Like literally because on the I think we can agree with both. Yeah. Like we have lots of complaints about UFOs and governments. <laughs> well, you, you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to laugh at the demo then. It's quite interesting because the UFO one actually happened by accident. So I was demoing in Dublin and I was like, hey, I need a data set. So I Googled random stuff and I found this. So I was like, ah. Cool. Oh, you didn't see one then? <laughs> No, 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 I've totally seen it. <laughs> that was after a lot of beer one night. So, ah. <laughs> so the whole idea behind the hack is that um, it takes you through a set of labs and you can choose how you want to hack. Now, the primary thing is getting data in from um, an Excel sheet because a lot of businesses have these like rogue Excel sheets all over the show. Mm. So it shows you how to bring that information into the common data service using data flows and then actually interact with that information. So the whole idea is that you run through lab one and then you can choose which labs you want to do after that, depending on how you feel, right? So if you just want to learn how to do flow, you can just go lab four. If you want to build um, model-driven applications and pro business process flows, you can do labs two and three. And I've even started plugging in the AI builder labs to do like the UFO sightings one is the best. I will show you, but yeah. Um, and then you've got a couple of options and also how to hack. So you can choose to do it all on your own. So you can run through the whole hack on your own, follow the documents, it really, really works pretty well, teaches you stuff pretty quickly. Go Rogue is that you can follow the documents to an extent, but build your own thing, which is what the UFO one ended up being. Oh. You can team up with somebody and like work together with somebody. And also you can have a bunch of people working on the hack to say, well, you do Flow, you do Power BI, you do um, Common Data Service, I'll focus on model-driven apps and get somebody to build a Canvas app. And then bring it and together. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it all comes together, right? And then there's descriptions on each one and how they work. Uh, also, what's pretty cool is I've got a bunch of use cases, so some goals that you need to go through and try and get to. And also, you can kind of change the goals based on the type of hack you're running. And ultimately, also a couple little sort of diagrams to explain what it looks like. And you'll see in the documentation later that essentially the, the diagrams are quite important because it shows you what you're working on as you go through the hack, right? So what do you get at the end? Well, let me show you guys something cool, right? So one of the ones that I ended up building, uh, these are a couple of apps that I'd, I'd worked on. So as an example, what would typically happen is that you might build a canvas app to help people spot UFOs. So I'll give you a quick peek. This is one of the ones that I built. Right, there we go. Some little UFO sighting wow. canvas app. Comes in so smooth, That's right? some gorgeous UI yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Right, so what you can do is you can pop in. Uh, you can see a list of UFOs that have already been captured. A random badger made its way in here. <laughs> the, the random badger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the random badger. What you can then do is pop into using the AI functionality, pop into detect. I'm just going to quickly go and grab uh, one of the UFOs. One moment, please, Carlo. <laughs> I would have thought you would have got the badger. I was I was thinking about it. Um, I have since tried to stop using the badger because I suppose it's not relatable. It's not a UFO, right? So, so that, that's 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 the whole idea, right? Okay, let me go quickly grab one. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's pick this one over here. That one looks good. So you pop it in there. Ultimately, it'll run. Figure out if it's a UFO or not. Hopefully, it does oh, pick it up. UFO or not. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. There you go. So it's found oh, out it's a UFO. That's really cool. 
a random ID, give it a city, give it a state. Oh, that's and, cool. Okay, comments, fireball from the sky. <laughs> and then also what it does, it actually populates the shape already. So what will end up happening is you end up saving that up. Now the key part is that this is the quite simple, this is actually the simple piece. What's really key though is when you flip out into your model driven applications, I'm going to cruise into my UFO sightings model app. I've got a Power BI dashboard that actually manages the type of sightings across. What it also does though is it uses AI Builder and it actually tells me whether or the type of UFO sighting that I've actually logged. So the one that I captured is right over here. Ultimately, the AI functionality will run against that and actually figure out the shape. So in this one, I'll pick a previous one. It's actually based on the based on the fact that I've got various comments in here. It's decided that it's a fireball, and here's the AI record that it's leveraged, that it's actually used. And this is created through Flow as well. So there's quite a bit of Flow that runs off in the background. So this is 84% sure that it's a fireball-shaped UFO. Um, sort of off the back of that, right, what will happen is that you want to be able to view the data in a more analytical state. So typically, we fly into Power BI. See what I did there? Fly into Power BI. Mm, like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. You're so on brand with your UFOs today. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. So if you take a look, right, this is based on the data set. We can take a look at, let's take uh, a more reasonable country like Germany. We don't have more a lot reasonable. of UFO sightings. <laughs> <laughs> let's take Great Britain, right? So that's the Britain. GB right, has so a lot of UFO low, sightings. Wow. sightings. Yeah. Are they all you, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's FDB. Let's pick the States. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Right. Oh, guys. Only a few in Canada, I see. Yeah, I think we're I the most reasonable. I know, exactly. <laughs> no so UFOs reasonable. over Seattle. Yeah. That is cool. The, uh, yeah, I also pulled on the key indicator, so you can actually see that most UFOs in the, U in the US are shaped like a fireball, so there might be something really strange going on there. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, folks, is that you can actually get to this entire hack with all the data on GitHub. So you pop into GitHub, you use aka.ms forward slash hack at speed. And see. all those hack packs are there. Yep, the presentation. And in fact, there's even a document that takes you through each of the labs one by one and shows you how to build these things out. So the cool part is that you're not on your own. You can choose to do it on your own, but you've got all these different hacks. And I'm adding data sets as I go, right? So the next one I'm doing is a not-for-profit. Um, yeah, so That's if you guys amazing. want to contribute. That's right, so it, cool. That is yeah. really amazing. Well, thank you so much for showing us that. Yeah. It's I, I've got so many like I so, have many, so many questions. Yeah, right I know, now. Yeah. I know you do. And I was like, Jonas, <laughs> loving this. I this can just is tell. amazing, and I can imagine this is so compelling to get people who may not even yeah. think they like tech. Yeah, to be interested. Something in like kind of yeah. you can take these really cool, fun scenarios, yeah. and like yeah. you know, everyone wants some fun. It doesn't have to be you know, it doesn't no. have to be something like directly relatable in a certain industry because not everyone no. has that experience. Right. And this is the kind of cool thing where you can get people. You can kind of throw them the hook can yeah. get them interested. And I know, Chris, yeah. you've done this hack with a bunch of kids from high school, right? Like well, middle, so we, we middle did, and high yeah, school. It, it's, it's interesting. The last one we actually did was, um, it was at a partner who had never seen Power Platform before. Oh. So all we really did was, this is at the, one of the last hacks, we took them through the documentation. It seems like a lot, but you know, I like pretty pictures. So it yeah. basically guides you on how to do everything. And um, so there you can work on those two sections I there. Literally step by step, so it's really it's really fun. It's really really easy to follow. Uh, it's, so I cool. think the great thing about this this pack is the mm -hmm. fact it can, kind of caters for lots of different scenarios. So one of the challenging things about running these things is if you get a kind of group of people like I really yeah. like the all or nothing yeah. or the the double up. That's right. And like that was like you can you're kind of empowering teams to yeah. run the way they want with the with the tech. Right, because some people really are solo learners, mm -hmm. and some w learn better in yeah. pairs, and others, if there's not 20 people doing the same thing, they're not going to learn it. Oh, I'm a solo yeah. learner. I go yeah. off in a corner, and I'm like, you know, I'm doing my own thing, yeah. and then I want to come back. Like, I, I love that back. responsibility. Yeah, I, I want yeah. to go learn concepts on my own, and then have people to ask questions to. Yeah. Because usually, once I have some information, then I can ask intelligent questions, versus how do you start and be stuck there. So, Chris, we're almost out of time. Yeah. Before you leave us, we would love to know what is a call to action you have for our audience listening and watching today? What do you want everyone to go do today? Right now, yep. Cool. All right, folks, so I'd be thinking about it around this call to action piece, and normally I would say, hey, you know, because I've got loads of data rents, I'm like, ah, oh, put data in the common data service, it's the right way to go. <laughs> and and yep. I've still, I'm still, I'm, I've snuck it in there, right? So that's not my call to action, I'm just saying it's awesome. <laughs> but I think I think the call to action is a bit of, a bit different for me, actually, and I, you know, after really thinking about it, what I want to say is that I've started merging my personal enthusiasm with my enthusiasm for the Power Platform, and what it's done for me is the fact that it's enabled me to sort of start mixing 
the stuff I'm doing from a working perspective, I still don't believe my job is actually a job. I, I have the best time ever because I work with all my friends. But it's kind of like I'm starting to learn about what people are really looking for from a technology perspective. And when I mix it with what I'm doing personally, what I found is that it's easier for me to enable the partners and the customers I'm working with with that information, right? So what I would say is, instead of just focusing on, oh, let's solve a complaints problem or let's solve an, uh, a, you know, a very basic business problem, bring it in, start learning about what you could do, do with it in your actual home life mm -hmm. and then start applying that. So like one of the things my wife and I have done recently was we said, okay, what we're going to do is for our New Year's resolutions, it's actually our New Year's goals, we've built a Canvas app that oh, pr pushes data into cool. the common data service and it actually monitors how far we are. And the thing that I want to say is like Power Platform is the perfect symphony of your left and right brain. <laughs> and I think I when, you kind of, yeah, when you bring them together, you know, the kind of music that you get is really mm -hmm. your own. And mm -hmm. what I've found is that I'm a, I, I just want to be a rock star and the stuff that I'm creating is like reflective both in creativity and analytical side. Mm -hmm. So just enable yourself to be creative, merge what you're doing from the Power Platform perspective into your personal life, and then you'll see the results back in your working career. So like that's, that's actually my call to action. That's amazing. I love that. That's a really, really yeah. great idea. And that's something that yeah. everyone, so for those people watching that's right, right now, that's something you can literally do. Everyone yes. has a personal life. Yes. It doesn't matter what circumstance, yes. you can go and do that There's and use the technology. Weird problem in your home yeah. life that you can absolutely yeah. go and use Power Platform for. Yeah. It's and the best way to learn. There's a community edition, right? So that's you can right. go ahead and use the community edition that's of right. the Power Platform to go ahead and do this. Yes. There is nothing stopping you. Nope. And I love that. Yep. Power Platform is the symphony of your right brain and your left brain. Yeah. We're going to steal that. We're going to steal it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Chris, thank you so much for being here with us today. And audience, thank you so much for joining us. Till next time, less code, more power. Thank you, everyone.